Good morning and welcome to our Eucharistic celebration. If there is anyone here for the first time or visiting, we welcome you. Please let us remove all things that will distract us or others around us and turn off all cell phones and any other electronics. We want to remind you that the bathrooms next to the hall are open for your convenience, but please do not let young children go alone. Always make sure they are accompanied by an adult. We thank you for keeping your mask on and maintaining social distance during our celebration today. Today we celebrate the 32nd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Waiting is not the most popular stance to assume. To be so passive is not acceptable to many, and yet there is wisdom in waiting. We are actively watching and waiting for what our God does in the fullness of time. We can easily become discouraged if it seems that we have to wait for the thing that, which, that fulfills our lives. We are tempted to assume that our lives are only marginal. Yet, we know that our God gives us fullness of life. We accept his mercy and await his blessings. Please stand as we welcome our presiding priest, Father Ernesto. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and with your spirit. Amen. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this celebration. I forgot to put a sign there outside. Enter at your own risk. So, <laughs> uh, we have been done uh, trying to do, I mean, everything we can, but you know, with the wind, the water is almost impossible, but uh, hopefully you understand the situation. And welcome, and it's amazing to see so many people, 8 o'clock, now on this Mass, you know, um, how much we love our faith, our community, and also the desire to be here, um, to praise God, to be grateful for everything, everything He has done uh, for us. Today we also have our brothers and sisters, uh, our families on uh, Zoom, um, because second Sunday, of the man is when normally they uh, join us so they cannot be maybe personally but they are through zoom and so also we welcome them and for us to celebrate this circuit mysteries in a little moment of silence we ask god for forgiveness for our sins especially when we are not prepared ready to receive our lord in our lives I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my thought, through my thought, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary and Virgin, all the angels and saints, 
and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May your Mary God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. We sing the glory. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Merciful God, graciously keep us from all adversity, so that in, in hinder in mind and body alike, we may pursue in freedom of heart the things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated to listen to the readings. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Resplendent and unfading is wisdom, and she is readily perceived by those who love her, and found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known in anticipation of their desire. Whoever watches for her at dawn shall not be disappointed for he shall find her 
sitting by his gate. For taking thoughts of wisdom is the perfection of prudence. And whoever for her sake keeps vigil shall quickly be free from care. Because she makes her own rounds, seeking those worthy of her, and graciously appears to those in the ways, and meets them with all solicitude. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. pines and my soul thirsts like the earth parched lifeless and without water my soul For your kindness is a greater good than life. My lips shall glorify you. My soul is thirsting for you, Lord my God. Thus will I bless you while I live. Lifting up my hands, I will call upon your name. As with the riches of a banquet shall my soul be satisfied and with exult lips my mouth shall praise you my soul shadow of your wings I shout for joy my soul is thirsting for you oh Lord my God a reading from the first letter of Saint Paul to the Thessalonians we do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who are falling asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God through Jesus bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this, on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with the word of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. your Lord will come.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones, when, when taking their lamps, brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flags of oil with their lamps. Since the bridegroom was long delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise ones replied, No, for there may not be enough for us and you. Go instead to the merchants and buy some for yourselves. While they went off to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went into the wedding feast with him. Then the Lord was locked. Afterwards, the other virgins came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he said in reply, Amen, I said to you, I do not know you. Therefore, stay awake, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Okay, let me see how many families are connected from our school. Oh, only six. They are still asleep. Okay, so we are going to do today the clapping. So we had a little rain uh, yesterday, and uh, we are grateful for that rain, and also now the wind, so it's good. So put your hands, and then we do with one finger, two... Three, four, five. Four, three, two, one. Miren los viejitos como se divierten. One. Then we do the wave. One, two, three. Woo. Cuidado con los shoulders, ok. One finger. Two, three, four. Five, four, three, two, one. Come on. Los Angeles rain, one. The way, one, two, three. Good. Also, our former students, they still enjoy the clapping, right? Good. One, two, one, two. One, two. Faster, faster, faster. Faster. The way, one, two, three. Okay, no more. Today I'm not lying now, it's only six. Three are still on the bed and the other with the abuelita on lado ahí. Anyway, welcome to our families from our school and also to all of you. Of course, I see also many families here from our school. Our students, welcome to this uh, beautiful day, beautiful morning. Little windy, but you know, is uh, is nature so um, a little bit to um, understand today's gospel I think I will go higher because I'm a little bit short um, in to understand today's gospel and uh, next Sunday gospel you know we need to put in mind to uh, put in our minds that we are getting to the end of our liturgical year which will end in two uh, Sundays when we are going to celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King. You know, the last three uh, Sundays we have listened to this gospel where Jesus has been attacked uh, by scribes, Pharisees, uh, the religious leader of his time because they are upset, they are angry, and they want to get rid of him. Because the message of Jesus, the way he is, teaching to the people is 
the opposite in the way they were sharing the law of God, the a message of God. And so they were angry, upset, they want to read, uh, get rid of him. That's why they, uh, we have been hearing these uh, questions, putting trumps to uh, Jesus, trying to, you know, uh, get rid of him. But now we shift, we change to a different kind of Gospels. And these Gospels today and next Sunday will be about the second coming of Jesus, the end of the world. And as I said, it's because we are coming to the end of our liturgical year. And God willing, at the end of this month, we are going to begin uh, our new liturgical year with the first Sunday of Advent. And so, in today's Gospel, we hear Jesus telling us that the kingdom of God will be like these ten virgins. Five were foolish, five were uh, wise. And so, they were going to meet the bridegroom. Of course, in those years, there was no electricity, there was no cell phone, there was no, you know, flashlights. They used this uh, I, in my youth. 40 something years ago, I still pray, uh, play with those um, lamparas de petróleo, right? We put the, uh, the petróleo and then we cover it a little hole, then we put a pedazo de trapo, a little piece of cloth, then uh, a can, uh, un bote, we make a hole and then put it inside, and then we, you know, so it was like a little lamp for us. So it was really interesting those days. Anyway. So, more or less, that was the idea for them. Of course, they used different kind of oil, most probably uh, uh, fat, uh, animal fat, or uh, I don't think they was, uh, were using those days um, plant uh, oil, but most were the fat of the animals. And then, um, of course, the foolish one didn't bring extra oil, but the wise one, they brought extra oil. Now, also, for us to understand about the weddings on those days, Jesus' days, so the wedding uh, could go from two, one to two weeks of celebrations. And then, at the end of those celebrations, the bridegroom, together with his friends, he will start this uh, kind of journey, going from house to house at night, with friends because that night he will go and you know go to the house of the, um, the bride and get her and bring her to his home but on the way the bridegroom and his friends they will stop with other relatives they go they will go from village to village so the most people will participate on that wedding the better the more blessing for them and that's why the uh, virgins that were waiting, they fell asleep because the bridegroom, it took a long, long way before getting to where they were. And then when he came, of course, the foolish ones didn't have oil enough. The wise ones uh, still have oil to join the procession, going back to the house of uh the bride, together with the bride, you know, they needed to go back. Of course, when they go to the place of the bridegroom, the door was locked and nobody else was allowed. Now, on those times, you know, those years, you know, also when there was a celebration in a village, of course, when they closed the door, they didn't allow anyone else. Why? Because they will never know if it's a friend, if it's a thief, or if it's an enemy. And in those years, you know, it was a little bit different, the situation. So that's why they will lock, close the door, and no one else will come. Now, what can we learn from this parable? So the first one is that we don't know when Jesus will come. We don't know when Jesus will call us. And that's why the first invitation for us is to be ready, to be prepared to receive Jesus, to receive his second coming. Of course, 
as the ten virgins experience because they didn't know when the bridegroom will arrive. In the same way, we also, we don't know. And that's good because can you imagine if we knew when, are we, when, when we will die, you know? Many of, us, many of us might be chicken up, you know? Say, oh my God, I'm dying. Uh, but, so that's the first time we don't know. And that's good that we don't know. Now, in order for us to be ready to prepare, the first thing that we need to avoid is to be afraid. To start getting terrified. To start getting anxious. That's not the way in which we should wait and get ourselves ready to receive Jesus when he comes or when he will call us. There is a saying, I don't remember his name, but they ask him, if tomorrow you knew that tomorrow you will die, what will you do? And the saying answer, I will continue doing the same. Of course, that saying, every day he was helping others, he was loving others, he was being of help to others. And he was ready, anytime. And that's the invitation for us. To every day do the best we can, and hopefully do good deeds. Because as we will uh, hear next Sunday, God will never ask us how many material things you acquired, how many houses, how much power you had when you were in this life. What we will hear next Sunday is, do you give food to the hungry? Do you, do you give uh, water to the thirsty? Do you help others? Do you visit the sick? Those are the things that God will ask us. If we were merciful, good for our brothers and sisters. And so, also, we have as church the sacraments that are instruments very practical for us to purify our hearts, purify our lives, to join in the community and also get ready or be ready to receive our Lord when He comes, when He will call us. Now, of course, to talk about the end of the world, to talk about the end of our lives, to talk about that this world is just passing by, is very challenging for our new generations, is very challenging for our world to listen and to you know, learn that this material world is just something that we will experience, but at the end, our final place, our final house is not here. Is as we heard in the second reading, at the presence of Jesus, at the presence of God. And for us, to tell that to our world, to our new young generations, young people, I mean, they don't want to hear that. Again, I make this joke, but it's, it's true. Many young people prefer a cell phone than to go to heaven. They pray that there will be cell phone, Instagram, Snapchat. And now the new one, TikTok, right? If there is no TikTok in heaven, I, I don't want to go. Well, para los viejitos, Facebook, right? But that's how attached, how dependent, that's how convinced we are. I mean, let's put it in another more practical way. There, is many, there are many young people, and I have nieces. They prefer their cell phones to, instead of their parents. They defend to death a cell phone, a Wi-Fi than to obey their parents. Even though their parents, you know, they are giving them uh, a house, food, protection, studies, but still, 
The world has convinced our new generations, our young people, that an, you know, a cell phone, a text, a friend that is 3,000 miles away is more important than the person that love people or persons or parents that love you and do everything for your good. But that's how our world is or has convinced us that these material things are the best and the most, you know, uh, thing that can give us happiness. Now, I don't have anything about techno anything against technology. I mean, I like Samsung's, you know. I don't like Apple's because Samsung have better camera. I communicate with my parents, with my dad. My parents, no, because my, my mom is already in heaven, so I don't, I don't have the direct line. With my brothers, my, my friends. Yesterday, I was just talking again with my friend, a bishop, Father Natalio Paganelli in Sierra Leone. I mean, talking about the missions and all the uh, challenges and everything that he's doing. I mean, technology is amazing, and we can learn many things. But the problem is when that comes, the most important, the center of our lives, the center of our happiness, that's the problem. That's a big problem. And that's why I was saying that for us to listen and all, to tell our new generations about that this world is just passing. And our final destination, our final home is at the presence of God, at the presence of Jesus. That's very challenging. But that's true. Just look around. How many people during this time has passed away? I mean, many of them because of COVID, many of them because accidents or other reasons. But this world will end. Our journey in this world will end. But if we have faith in the same way St. Paul had it, that certainty that, yes, let's live this life the best we can. Let's practice and use all the qualities, talents that God has given us, not only for our selfishness, but to help others, to make our world a better place then we will be ready to say thank you God for the opportunity to live in this world and now I'm ready to go and join you in heaven. So, this challenge, and believe me, I'm not saying that it is not in some way scary when we hear about you are dying, you are sick, you have, you know, short time of, uh, to live, I remember my experience with Father Juan Enriquez. They said two years, I came here and after eight months, he passed away. And then my mom, after three weeks, she passed away. You know, challenging, it's challenging, it's painful, yeah. But hopefully our faith, our trust, that our final home, our final rest won't be on, you know, six, seven feet underground. Maybe our bodies, but our souls, our real us, will go back to the presence of the God who created us. Amen. Please stand to proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father, before the all ages, God, 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 by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate, Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. Dickens was writing about the French Revolution, but this word could apply to any time, including our own. We hunger and thirst for wisdom, and we lift up our heartfelt prayer. For the church and all who serve by leading us, that we will give witness to the world of our longing and wisdom and seek wise counsel across the boundaries of nations and philosophy and philosophies. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For the world, that we will recognize our global challenges and cultivate the trust by which we can make the planet a place where the deepest human values rule. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. That all who bear the name Christian will seek the unity Jesus intends for his people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our prayer. For those who live, whose lives have been appended by pandemic, by epidemic dif difficulties and interpersonal strife, that they will find the sure foundation and witness which bids us wait to the Lord stout-heartedly. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Our prayer. For recovery to full health for all people who are ailing, for the pres preservation of all who strive mightily and rid the world of sickness and despair. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Pray. For the resurrection of all who have died, especially those who have died recently, and for all those whose anniversaries occur at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Pray. Today we are praying for the health of Mario Hernandez. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased brothers and sisters, especially we remember in this Mass, Marcelino Rendon, Jose Santo Ramirez, Mauro Ramirez Sr., Maria del Carmen Chavez, Ana Ramirez Chavez. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Also we pray for our country that as we uh, continue um, through this transition, through this, you know, time, may we remain at peace, also united as a nation, as people, always respecting, accepting uh, all as one nation, we pray. Lord, hear prayer. In a little moment of silence, we present to our Lord our own personal petitions and prayers. We pray. O oh, Holy Wisdom, you greet us as we awaken, and you beguile us with your genuine promise of life live serenely. Teach us to take our setbacks in stride and to await the heavenly wedding banquet, where all will, will, where all will rejoice in the Bridegroom Jesus Christ, who conquers all evil and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, your mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hand, but praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor, we pray, O Lord, upon the sacrificial gifts offered here, that celebrating in mystery the passion of your Son, we may honor it with loving devotion through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. And by his suffering cancel out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them, light that you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give we us this day our daily bread, bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your verse, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another sign of Christ's peace. at home, I'm going to say now the act of the spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramental, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but I say the word in my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. For the ones who are going to receive Holy Communion, please answer the body of Christ.
Yeah.
announcements for this week. We have 40 announcements. Okay? Just. So, first one about uh, religious education. So, the registration online for the second year, first communion and confirmation, uh, will be closed on November 30th. As of uh, that day, we will no longer be accepting registration in an effort to start in virtual classes in January 2021. Unfortunately, this year will not be able. We will not be able to offer first year of faith only for the sec second years. Okay. To the families of our community who uh, are coming uh, to pick up food from the program that we are helping to distribute the food, uh, we would like to inform you that on Wednesday, November 25th, we will uh, you will receive food for three days as the school will be closed on Thursday, November 26th and Friday, November 27th. So that day you will receive three meals, okay? Also, our parish office office returns to the usual business business hours, Monday to Friday. Uh, we have been closed Mondays, but now it will be open Monday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Also, our religious uh, items store is already open on sa Sundays, so la tiendita de artículos religiosos está abierta para los que gusten comprar. Um, Prayers, uh, books, Bibles, um, so they have many, many things there that you can buy. Now, if you would like to receive our parish newsletter uh, at home uh, in your email, please call us. We need your name, phone number, and email, so we'll just mail, email it to you, uh, and so you will uh, have the information. Also, we continue inviting you to um, please uh, get your Christmas tree through the program, uh, the activity that our school is doing. Um, they also have garlands and natural crowns and all uh, these activities to raise funds for our school. Of course, we need to pre-order. The last day to order is November 16th. So please, um, Many of you already took envelopes. If you are new, uh, just coming today to Mass, uh, the, uh, at the exit there is a table. One of our parents from school is there. We have the envelopes where you have all the information about the Christmas tree, the three kind of Christmas tree that we have. We are offering the prices and also a paper that you need to fill it up so that um, you can come and bring back that envelope uh, on Sundays in uh, classroom number uh, one with Maria or during the week at the school office or in our rectory, or our office at the rectory. So we really invite you to um, get your Christmas tree and help our school. Now, if you wanna donate and help us buy the tree, Christmas trees that we are gonna use for our uh, church here, you can go with Maria and then make your donation there. The last one, uh, maybe the last one, Father Louis now is at the back there watching uh, watching us. And now he's the, the director of social media, you know, these millennials, you know, that's what I know what to do. Um, so he will be updating our Facebook and Instagram Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram by looking up St. Philip Neri Catholic Church and then he will be um, updating the information, putting uh, new uh, pictures, videos of what's going on in our uh, community. And uh, of course, Instagram and Facebook are more, much more popular than um, YouTube and also for, you, for information and updates also will be much more practical because many, many of uh, us, we have uh, more Facebook, or especially in our community, you know, that uh, is a little bit more uh, older, they use more Facebook. So please uh, 
look at us there and join us on social media, okay? Another little thing, um, our uh, Altares de Muertos, uh, the water, we try our best, but the water, whew, uh, let's do un baño. So if you had pictures in our, on our altar, Altar de Muertos, uh, the pictures, uh, they will be available during the week at the office, okay? Because some of you may, may be saying, so it is my picture, my altar, so uh, the water really, uh, it didn't didn't cooperate so but the picture will be available in, in the office uh, during the week uh, the other little thing I want to again uh, really be uh, give thanks to uh, Ricardo Moctezuma is one of our parishioners as you see our carps are higher um, you know um, he had the idea and so he he got the, the pipes and also the joints to make it higher, so it looks now even be more beautiful and you know more open our space because now it's, it's higher. And of course, Ricardo Laguna is the one who works here with us and all the uh, volunteers. We have been trying uh, hard to do our best, but well, uh, at least the wind hasn't taken out our tarps, right? <laughs> or we are not like, ah, hold it, hold it. Uh, no, I think in that we did a very good job with all these barrels of water, so it doesn't move at all. So. Anyway, the point is thank you very much for all the people helping us to have this place. Also, every time we ask you to please help us to clean uh, the chairs, so thank you, thank you very much. Really, it's amazing how many people are ready to help us and, uh, you know, to keep this uh, place, you know, as beautiful as we can, okay? So thank you very much. Now, five people that will help us to clean our chairs today. Please raise your hands. We have two, three, four, five, six. Thank you very much. And please stand for our prayer. Now, one little more thing. Um, as long as the weather uh, permits us, we will continue having our masses. The, uh, uh, and if you see that it will rain, please bring, bring your boots, uh, water boots or snow boots, your umbrella, uh, because as far as uh, I'm concerned, I mean, and also looking at the eight o'clock mass with all, I call them viejitos, my God. This place was packed and they were receiving more water than you, you know? Uh, and they they didn't they never moved they were you know uh, so the point is we'll continue celebrating our masses even if it's raining so bring your uh, umbrellas your ponchos or whatever but we'll we'll be here at uh, God willing okay mm. let us pray nourished by this sacred gift O Lord we give you thanks and beseech your mercy that by the pouring forth of your spirit the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord and our brothers and sisters. Thanks, Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, Father.